Since its creation in 1979, the Intercontinental Championship has provided wrestling fans with some of the best moments and matches in all of WWE's history. Often seen as a stepping stone to the main event scene, the IC title was held by some of the biggest stars in history before they made it to the very top. Across history, 88 men and one woman have held the belt, but some have definitely been better than others. Shall we find out who the greatest is? Oh, go on then. Before we start, on Honorable mentions must go to Don Morocco, Triple H, Shelton Benjamin, The Rock, Rob Van Dam, Shawn Michaels, and, of course, Pat Patterson. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 best intercontinental champions ever. Join us. Number 10, The Ultimate Warrior. His questionable personal views to one side, The Ultimate Warrior was one of the biggest megastars the WWE have ever produced. The face paints, the tassels, the sprinting, the incoherent shouty promos, all of this combined to create one captivating force of nature that fans just couldn't help but get behind. The nature in which Warrior won his first Intercontinental Championship is, of course, legendary. At the first ever SummerSlam, the Honky Tonk Man made an open challenge for someone to try and end his record-setting icy reign. Out-sprinted warrior full of piss, vinegar, and several other substances we won't talk about right now. In 31 seconds, warrior captured the gold, shattered Honky's reign, and made himself look like an absolute beast. He would hold the title for 216 days before losing it to Rick Rude at WrestleMania 5. Then, at the following year's SummerSlam, Warrior won the title back and reigned for another 218 days before taking the belt into WrestleMania as part of the ultimate challenge against Hulk Hogan. Pure Distrusity. Hey, he made the word up, not me. Number 9, The Miz. It feels weird to call someone who had two single-day reigns with the IC title one of the best, but there is no denying that Miz is one of the most prominent holders of the belt in recent years. His first reign began on Raw 1000, which lasted a not-too-shabby 85 days. However, what happens if we fast-forward to 2016, eh? After beating Zack Ryder for the title one night after he had shocked the world at WrestleMania 32, Miz spent a whopping 188 days days with the belt. This was the time period that included his fantastic rant on Talking Smack, a promo that made him more relevant than he had been in an age. His feud with Dolph Ziggler over the title was one of the highlights of SmackDown at the time, and when he moved over to Raw, he made the Intercontinental Championship that brand's top prize whilst Brock Lesnar and the Universal title were on holiday. In total, Miz has been IC champ for 592 days, the second most of any person in history. You have to admit, that is pretty awesome! Sorry, couldn't help myself. Number 8, Gunter. The big man currently holding the Intercontinental title makes it to the number 8 spot on our countdown. And considering how his run is shaking out, there is every indication that he could be much closer to the top of it in a few months' time. There were fears that the ring general might not excel on WWE's main roster, with fans pointing to his new moniker and streamlined physique as unnecessary changes to the former Volta's presentation. He has well and truly put those fears to bed since convincingly beating Ricochet for the IC Gold on the June 10th, 2022 edition of SmackDown. Since then, he's racked up impressive defenses against the King of Flight, Shinsuke Nakamura, Rey Mysterio, and Braun Strowman. And that's not to mention the contemporary classic he had with Sheamus at Clash at the Castle, a match that turns my chest a dark shade of purple just thinking about it. Gunter's matches are often the best of the night, and he's done much to restore prestige to the IC title after years of it being treated like an afterthought. Hell, at the rate he's going, Gunter might just beat the record for the longest reign ever. Number 7, Mr. Perfect. Holding the title for 406 days across two reigns, Kurt Hennig's alter ego was just about the perfect IC champ. After failing to wrest the WWE title away from the leathery waist of Hulk Hogan, Perfect set his sights on the IC title, which had been vacated by the Ultimate Warrior after he had won the WWE title from Hogan at WrestleMania 6. Technically sound and super hardworking, Hennig was great value for his tournament final victory over Tito Santana. 
Santana. He defended it against all comers, including several great matches with Santana before dropping it to the Texas Tornado Kerry Von Erich at SummerSlam 1990. He won it back from the Tornado within a few months and set about defending it once more, retaining against diverse opposition like Shawn Michaels, Big Boss Man, and Tugboat. Sadly, Hennig sustained a potentially career-ending back injury whilst in the mid of what could have been a record-setting run. Selflessly, he battled through absolute agony to pass the torch to Bret Hart in a classic at SummerSlam 91. Which brings us nicely to number 6, Bret Hart. The Hitman may have only been champion twice, reigning for a pretty decent 290 days in total, but it is the quality of his matches whilst in the IC mix that we are interested in here. Just off the top of our heads, we can think of three especially excellent encounters where Brett was either defending or chasing the gold, elevating the entire IC scene in the process. The first was at SummerSlam 1990, when Hart wrestled Mr. Perfect. A mouth-watering combination, these two men more than lived up to their reputations in a barn burner that saw Hart put Perfect in the sharpshooter to win. The second was at WrestleMania 8, when the excellence of execution tangled with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hart had lost the gold to the Mountie, from whom Piper had won it, and now the two legends would tussle to see who was the best. Spoiler, it was Brett. Finally, there is the epic family clash that he had with his brother-in-law, the British Bulldog, to consider. Fought in front of a rabid crowd at London's Wembley Stadium, Davy Boy unseated the best there ever will be in what many consider to be the greatest intercontinental championship match of all time. Need we say more? Number 5. Razor Ramon The late great Scott Hall may have had a fairly lousy Cuban accent, but he was absolutely spot on when it came to being Intercontinental Champion. As Razor Ramon, Hall became the first person to reach four reigns with the gold. Considering only ten others have equaled or bettered that in subsequent years, that is not bad going for the bad guy. He first won the belt after his click pal Shawn Michaels was stripped of the title for not defending it. However, when HBK came back and proclaimed that he was still champion, Champion, Razor was forced to battle his buddy at WrestleMania 10 in a ladder match. About still discussed today, Shawn vs Razor was unlike anything anyone had seen before. After an epic encounter, Hall retrieved the belts and was the undisputed champion. Whilst champ, he continued his feud with HBK as well as having feuds with Diesel, Jeff Jarrett and Goldust. Ramon's IC title runs were one of the bright spots of the inconsistent new generation era. He could always be relied upon for a great promo and an even better match, and it's baffling that he never got his shot at being world champion. Number 4, Pedro Morales. The third ever IC champ, the first man to win it twice, the first man to hold the belt for over a year. When it comes to the Intercontinental Championship, WWE Hall of Famer Pedro Morales pretty much has you covered. The Puerto Rican sensation first beat Ken Patera for the belt in December 1980 and, in doing so, set yet another record. As he had already been world champion and a tag team champion, this made Pedro the first ever Triple Crown champion in company history. He lost the belt to Don Morocco in June of 1981, but won it back three months later. Next time he dropped the belt, he had had it in his possession for a whopping 425 days. That is still the second longest reign of all time. Considering that Morales was already a former world champion when he won his first IC title, it added a whole heap of prestige to the belt and helped to solidify it as a fixture of WWE. Without Pedro's early reigns, we may not have the little belts that that we all so dearly cherish today. Number 3, Chris Jericho. As of right now, Chris Jericho holds the record for the most reigns with the Intercontinental Championship. After jumping ship from WCW, Jericho took just four months to win his first IC title, beating China at Armageddon 99. He then became co-champions with the Ninth Wonder, but that is a confusing time that we don't talk about. Over the next decade, the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller won the belt eight more times, making him a nine-time Le Champion in total. And he beat all sorts for the gold, Rey Mysterio, Jeff Hardy, Rob Van Dam, and perhaps his greatest foe in this division, Chris Benoit. Everyone remembers their hard-fought ladder match at Royal Rumble 2001, including that iconic spot of a ladder-assisted Walls of Jericho. His reigns were never especially lengthy, his longest was just 111 days, which was also his penultimate, but he did a great job when he had the gold, and that record has to count for something. Number 2, The Honky Tonk Man. Roy Farris 
joined WWE in 1986 as the Honky Tonk Man, a goofy Elvis impersonator who loved slicking his hair back and riding around in his pink Cadillac. He also loved beating Ricky Steamboat for the Intercontinental Championship, because that's exactly what he did on the 2nd of June 1987. For the next 454 days, Honky ran wild with the belt, retaining it over the likes of Brutus Beefcake, Jake Roberts, and even Bruno Sammartino. He didn't win all these matches clean, but he didn't have to. He wasn't the greatest in-ring worker of all time, nor did he hold the belt more than once, but how can you deny the greatness of a man who held the title for so bloody long? Honestly, he was just perfect in his role as a snivelling, cowardly heel, making his eventual title loss all the sweeter. Number 1. Macho Man Randy Savage If you are going to have just one reign as Intercontinental Champion, then you could do worse than to follow the example set by Macho Man Randy Savage. After cheating to win the belt against Tito Santana, Savage embarked on his gargantuan solo run with the mid-card belt. For 414 days, he reigned super supreme, defeating all comers by any means necessary. Those means usually meant shoving Miss Elizabeth in front of them. We said he was a great champion, not an honourable one. He defended the belt at the second ever WrestleMania, holding off George the Animal Steel. But it was at that same event one year later where Randy would tie himself to the title forever. We are of course talking about his magical title defence against Ricky the Dragon's Steamboat. In another contender for the best Intercontinental Championship match ever, the two elite tier wrestlers produced pure art on the ring canvas before Steamboat countered a scoop slam to snatch the prize. For his long reign, the calibre of his matches, and the outstanding fashion in which he lost the title, it is a tip of the crown from us to the future Macho King.